So I'm delighted to be here with Nigel Lyons, a leading yacht designer who's shortly going to be delivering the Cruising Association's annual Handsome Lecture here at CA House in London's Limehouse Basin. The title of Nigel's lecture this evening is Slippery Boats. We'll hear a bit more about that in a minute. Nigel is probably best known in yachting circles as the designer of the Adventurer, a 34.5 metre or 113 foot trimaran motor yacht which completed a record-breaking global circumnavigation in 1998. Interestingly, it's the first boat voyage around the world in less than the 80 days of Jules Verne's classic novel. He's also the designer of the record-breaking 75-foot trimaran B&Q, in which Ellen MacArthur broke the world record for a solo circumnavigation in 2005. Nigel, we're really delighted to welcome you here this evening and thank you and to also welcome our Facebook followers. Uh, hello. It would be lovely if you could just expand a little on the title of your lecture, Slippery uh, Boats. Yes, yes. well, um, I, I think I'm probably unusual in doing a very wide range of boats. We've always done that. We've got all kinds of things from sort of gaff rig wooden boats to um, racing trimarans. And I, I realised one day that actually in my book they've all got something in common and that in that they are what is sometimes called easily driven and that that's supposedly the word that people use and I thought well slippery that's what it is so that's what they've got in common. So it's nothing to do with polished bottoms? No not really it's <laughs> okay. to do with shape. Okay right. shape mm -hmm. um, and what about some of your latest projects can you give us any information about what you're up to? Well I've just come from um, the Elephant Boatyard where um, we've got a lovely exciting project which is um, um, the building, or they are going to build from this next week onwards, a uh, 50 foot catch, wooden catch, uh, to uh, our design. Now, Elephant Boatyard rings bells, and that's in Bursledon, isn't it? it on is, the south yes. coast? And um, Howard's Even, Way. It's the centre of the universe. Something to do with Howard's Way. Isn't it, it was indeed, oh. yes, for those of us who are old enough to remember. Yes, indeed. Yes. Marvellous. So, and you're build, your builder, you've designed this boat? Yes, yes. It's um, obviously there's more, more to owner. do, but it's actually at the stage where uh, they can start building it. And funnily enough, I realised with uh, in talking with the owner of the yard, uh, Tom Richardson, that exactly, almost exactly 50 years ago, I went to start to learn about boats uh, in that yard. And uh, there we all are, a couple of old gaffers ourselves now. Um, but we've got a nice project. How lovely, so you've come full circle. Yeah. yeah. Um, given that you are one of the world's leading designers of both sail and power boats, do you have a preference for one over the other? And if so, why? I think it's probably uh, driven, in my case, by um, opportunity. And I uh, happen to be doing quite a lot with motorboats at the moment. Um, and it's because coming from a different angle, I guess I can, um, I'm, I'm fascinated by finding ways to make motorboats that are, in a way, actually more suited to people who are used to, if you like, the culture of sail. And I don't think they've been catered for in the past, so I want to do it now. That's interesting. Do you find there are more people going for power rather over sail? Well, it's an age thing, in for one thing. Is it age? I, mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think so. I've, I've had people writing to me saying, yeah, I've had been sailing all my life. I know I need to have a motorboat, but I don't like what I see and um, so I can relate to that and I want to um, um, as I said make, make a boat that is more could be used more like um, a sailing boat i.e. having very long range and uh, not making too much noise and actually not going very fast at all but going at a speed that for a sailing boat would be great. And what about sort of fuel emissions and the sustainability angle and the costs of involved in producing low emission well, boats? Well, there's a lot to be done really and it's the, it's the shape of the slippery boat that does it. But you know, um, there are no miracles. Uh, these boats don't go very fast, but they go faster than displacement speed, which is the normal way that a heavy boat moves around. Mm. Uh, so they're sort of exploring the ground that lies between a displacement hull and a planing hull. Very interesting. Finally, just a quick one, what would you consider to be the highlight of your lengthy and extraordinary career to date? Uh, well, it's got to be Helen, really, isn't it? I mean, Helen's trying around. Yes, I mean, it was a wonderful project and she's, she's so terrific to work with. And um, she was quite young then, of course, as well. Um, but um, no, we, we had a great time. 
uh, the, 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 while the actual circumnavigation is on, even though it's her that's doing all the work, I, I have to say that um, for us designers, we do get quite stressed ourselves, wondering what's happening and dreading the phone ringing in the middle of the night saying something's fallen off, you know. So you're on 24 hour watch yeah, well, really, yes, watching right, her yes. progress. Well, I think we all right. were. Yeah. It was an awesome thing to, for her to yes, have done. Yes, it was a great relief when it was over. Yeah, sure. no, it was a great result. Well, thank you very much indeed for taking a few minutes out to talk to us this evening and very good luck delivering the Hanson Lecture. Thank you. Thank you. Was that a bit more?